what's up game boys and girls big t here back with another video and man uh, hmm sony's lost their damn minds <laughs> i don't know what else to say they uh obviously they recently revealed the playstation uh 5 pro which was long rumored to be a thing i wasn't really sure but uh uh, that it was actually going to be real but clearly it's a real thing uh and they re they revealed uh what it could do um it seems to be a little bit more than you know they have the graphics mode and they have the performance modes um it it, it partially it's just performance or graphics mode with performance modes performance which is basically 60 frames per second so you get high fidelity graphics but you also get 60 frames per second and you know who knows if that's going to be completely consistent across the board it depends on developers and what they know about the system or what they can get out of it um but i'll take them at the word i think it might be you know just that and there's also uh some increasing with the ray tracing you'll actually get um perhaps across the border ray tracing. i don't know if that's um they never they didn't really say that so and ray tracing is a resource hog so who knows how strong or how not strong it's going to be um or how predominant or it will be in each game uh but we'll see on that but uh yeah so the part they reveal the price for it and uh it was already a sticker shock just with the price alone it's going to be 700 dollars uh plus tax and uh you know depending on where you are you know uh here in Massachusetts, <laughs> that's going to be closer to 700 and is that 70 uh, i don't know if it's that much it's, it's closer to, it's going to be closer to 750 with tax um but there's another problem because there's another tax a hidden tax on it is that it's digital only so for everybody who wants this thing uh who wants you know the the you know the, the features that is going to allow you to have the, the better graphics you're going to be screwed if you have a physical uh library right now uh because it it won't mean anything on the playstation 5 pro uh you'll have to start all over uh or you could buy the disc drive which is i believe 80 dollars somewhere around there 70 to 80 dollars so that's already you know a hidden fee again if you are a physical media person you have physical games i'm sure a lot of uh playstation 5 owners do um i don't know what the percentage is but i most of them are i think because uh, the, the digital didn't sell all that great as far as i know um it didn't sell terribly but it, and i don't think it sold anything relevant um and then so you're basically if you're a digital if you're a physical media guy on uh, playstation 5 um to get the pro you're gonna have to pay up <laughs> you're gonna have to pay for that uh hard drive or that uh disc drive if you want to continue to play your games uh physically so that is a tax uh, and, and that's going to push you into the 800 dollars after taxes for the disc drive itself and taxes for the console itself you're well into 800 dollars um and that's just us because obviously in canada and the U uh, uk uh in europe uh it's basically another hundred pound uh over what we have to pay or in uh canada is just another hundred bucks and that's a lot of money for graphics mode <laughs> with with uh with 60 frames that's a lot of money um and uh that will probably make it a more niche kind of a, a certain type of gamer uh device a uh the you know the higher end guys who care about the the best of the best graphics and frame rates um I don't, I don't think it's going to do as well as even the PlayStation 4 Pro did, which I think it sold around 15 million units. Uh, they accounted for about 15 million units of the PS4 sales. So I, it's a ripoff. It is, from my perspective, an utter ripoff. Um, does this thing need to cost this much or are they just trying to make money? It feels like they're just trying to make some extra money. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't have a PlayStation 5 right now, uh, so I don't have a physical library, 
Um, but I do want a physical library on the PlayStation. When I do get it, eventually I'm going to get one. Um, and I'll just get the regular base PS5 uh, with the disk drive. Because I don't care for digital only. Um, I have to endure that on PC. But even when I do have digital games on PC, I will buy the physical version of it if it's possible um, for whatever console of my choice. So... Uh, like a lot of the uh, games I have on PC, um, I end up buying uh, uh, on Steam. I end up buying on Switch uh, if I can, uh, or my Xbox or PlayStation 4, or whatever. Um, and that's what I do. So uh, I do like my physical media, but you know, not everybody cares about it. Um, and I, it just, it's crazy. This is this is craziness to me. I don't know why this is not going to sell well. I don't think it will. And and you know. People are, you know, really tight with their money right now. So, yeah, sure, the enthusiasts will get it, um, most likely, if they really care about it. Um, the YouTuber uh, who does uh, videos and stuff and does, you know, commentary on gaming and whatnot, they're going to do it to talk about it and put it in their video. But I think for an average consumer, not going to, it's not going to sell well. But I, I don't know if they think it will. I don't think that's the goal. So I'd be surprised if that was their goal. But... Yeah, it's, it's, you're asking for a lot and then you're taking away the physical media aspect. And that just means in the future, this is what's going, because this is the highest tier of the PlayStation right now, the PS5 Pro. So that means PS6 uh, will not have a disk drive. I mean, it, it, I think it's just, um, we weren't sure if the next generation would be the generation that they go digital only, but it, Sony looks like that's what they're doing. Uh, they're moving on and they're doing digital only and they're ushering in uh, digital only. Um, you know, Microsoft is, was already uh, kind of, you know, testing those waters. Uh, a lot of the games that have been released late, lately uh, come out in really limited quantities on physical or not at all. Uh, so they're also headed that route. Um, but I thought maybe we'd have one more gen of physical, but it doesn't look that look like that way. I mean, Nintendo will probably definitely uh, be physical. Uh, uh, well, I'm sure it'll be physical for the Switch too, or whatever it's going to be called. Um, but there's a pretty good chance that the next console, you know, way out, uh, will also be physical because Nintendo likes those physical sales, um, and a lot of Nintendo fans still buy physical a lot. So. Uh, we'll see what they do, but man, it's crazy. Uh, so I've got, let me see, we're here. I, I don't know where I'm at on time wise, but yeah, I've, I've basically, this is going to be a two video in one because I don't want to do two videos that are kind of <laughs> uh, ragging on Sony a bit there, but yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, but you know, they released that, um, the PS portable or not portable PS. I knew I was going to screw that up. Uh, uh, portal. Uh, PlayStation Portal device, and that's 200 bucks, um, and obviously comes with the benefits, the added benefits of the uh, the haptic feedback and all that kind of stuff for the PlayStation controller, uh, the PS5 controller, DualSense or not DualSense, uh, is it, yeah, it is DualSense, right? Um, but uh, there's obviously better options and cheaper options so i just wanted to show this this actually looks a lot <laughs> like the dual sense this is uh my tablet and uh add-on uh bluetooth controller and this is let me see, uh, about 98 bucks so less than a hundred dollars so a hundred dollars cheaper than what you would do uh buying uh the playstation portal um, and it does the same thing and more because it's, it's a, also a tablet so you can do other things. And uh, there's just, I don't know, they're in kind of, feel off, it feels like they're in kind of rip-off mode right now with PlayStation. I don't know what they're doing, what the direction is. They got a really good game out now, an Astrobot um, Game of the Year contender. And uh, they're drowning out that with this stuff. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so at the end of this, I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> add on the other video I had done last week and, uh, yeah, so, uh, check it out. And, uh, at the end of that video, I'll ask what I usually ask. So, uh, there you go. What's up game boys and girls, big T here back with another video. I'm gonna try to keep this one as short as I possibly can. 
Um, I do have some visual aids, so it might take some more time. But uh, I'm just here to say Sony has lost their way with the PlayStation 5. Um, for me, they just gradually continue to lose their way. I don't know if it's just a them problem. I don't think it's just a them problem. I think it's an industry problem. Um, but I just, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> I don't. I, I haven't cared about the PlayStation 5, and I wish I had. Um, they had some opportunities to make me care, but they really haven't done so. So, before people, oh, you're just your Nintendo fanboy, you never cared about Sony, blah, blah, blah. Here, this is my original PlayStation right here. My original PS. Uh, I don't even want to call it that because I'll show you in a second. But this is my original PlayStation. Um, I still have it. Um, I am definitely a Nintendo fanboy. I love my N64 uh, a bit more, quite a bit more than I care for this console, but I did have a lot of fun on this console here, and um, it was just hard as a Nintendo fan, uh, a Nintendo only fan in mid 90s, uh, t t because there were so many games coming out on the PlayStation. It's just like you couldn't ignore the sheer volume. Um, I would say that the quality, at least the, the bigger quality games. Um, I cared more about were on the N64 and to some extent the Sega Saturn, um, but uh, I just, uh, I, you couldn't ignore the PlayStation um, and a lot of people didn't. It sold over 100 million units. Um, it sold a lot towards the end of its life cycle, so it was a lot closer earlier on in the 90s than people remember. It wasn't just, oh man, Nintendo got destroyed by PlayStation. Uh, there was some pretty stiff competition. Uh, for a few years, the first uh, two, three years especially, uh, they were not too far apart from each other as far as the console sales. But, like I said, you just couldn't have... Uh, Nintendo 64 had barely 300 games, and the PlayStation had 3,000. You know, like, it was just no competition as far as that goes, the sheer volume of games. Um, but a lot of people have way more nostalgia for the N64 for specific reasons. Um, some people will try to downplay that, but this video isn't about N64. It's about uh, PlayStation and how I feel like it lost its way. The PlayStation had sheer crazy amounts of games. I mean, uh, you know, when the PS1 came out, um, and this is the PS1, because I'm gonna keep saying PS1, but this is technically the PSONE. This is the smaller version that came out a little later. Um, I love this little thing. It looked really close to my compact disc player at the time. My CD player at the time was not much bigger, or my, not, not much smaller than this. So I think that was what Sony was going for to make the, you can barely see it with all this bright light. Um, I need to clean this thing. But yeah, uh, they, it was uh, barely much difference. But yeah, I mean, there was just way too many games. Uh, they took a lot more chances. They, they kind of had to, because they're the first time they came into the console space uh was with the playstation and so they you know they made a lot of deals they there were a lot of crazy quirky games came out on the playstation and um i'll show a list later that it wasn't my list but it was something i saw on a different uh, youtube channel that made me like really think about this stuff but yeah so obviously they just did did really well uh and there was tons of different games and a lot of games that were just associated with playstation and that's why when it got to the PlayStation 2, again, the console killed, I think, again, I talk about this all the time, the DVD player was a huge reason why that console sold so many. Um, but, you know, here it is. here's my PlayStation 2 controller right here. I often use it. PlayStation 1 DualShock. Um, uh, obviously, they put the uh, analog sticks on the later version of the PlayStation controller. Um, and the PlayStation 2 also had tons of games, RPGs, like, just crazy amounts of games right so uh, again tons of variety they continued a lot of the franchises they started on the playstation into the ps2 a lot of great games that you just couldn't ignore again gamecube had a much bigger library this time around i think it had around almost 800 games but it was still not what the ps2 was doing i guess i think the ps2 had 2000 uh, maybe almost 3,000 games. I can't remember exactly what the number was, but again crazy numbers um, And PlayStation was riding high um, No doubt about it when they went into the PS3 era uh, They were riding high maybe a little too high because they got a little arrogant with the PS3 It was super expensive super hard to program for um, they got a little bit uh, uh, You know big for their britches and they they suffered for it those few first few years 
uh, uh, the Xbox 360 was handing it to the PlayStation 3. Uh, speaking of which, here's my PlayStation 3 controller. I'm not going to show you all the consoles. I clearly have them. I have tons of games for all of them. You guys have seen my collections, whatnot, collection videos. Um, and like I said, they this is where they started to wane, I think. Uh, they started some big new franchises that kind of changed their mind about what their strategy was. Um, they got like the Uncharted and whatnot going. Um, uh, actually, they got Killzone uh, and Resistance, which were, you know, brought out to be kind of Halo, oh, Halo, Halo Killers. I combined that too. Halo Killers, as well as um, um, Call of Duty, because uh, Call of Duty was still really starting to get big then. So they, they wanted their own thing. They wanted their own Halo. They wanted their own Call of Duty. So they had Killzone and they had Resistance. And, uh, you know, they kind of left behind some of the other games that they did on the PS2. Like, I mean, they still had them, um, but Ratchet and Clank, which uh, was still kind of going, it was still, there was a few more Ratchet and Clank games on PS3, uh, but Jack and Daxter was done because Naughty Dog had moved on to Uncharted and they were about to bring out another huge franchise uh, a little bit, oh, actually at the end of the PS3's life cycle with The Last of Us. So they wanted to do more mature titles. And so, you know, they were making a lot of money. They were making sell a lot of sales, and they started to kind of get away from uh, what got them there. The 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 the, uh, the sheer, like, uh, experimentation that you got on PS1 and PS2. They got away from that, and they went for the more traditional blockbuster games. Um, you know, the big selling games. And they got away from, you know, the kind of smaller stuff that defines you as a console, that defines you as a uh, as a company uh, and when you forget to do that kind of stuff you get yourself in trouble um, and so by the time they got the ps4 it was basically all about call of duty because they pretty much uh, paid for the rights for that and it was all about them paying for games to keep them off other systems uh, obviously you couldn't uh, Wii U was struggling <laughs> mightily um, and so they didn't have a lot of competition there. Xbox was also struggling, um, but they had more competition there because their you know, the console power uh, wasn't too far in the arch architecture, you know how to you know the setup and whatnot wasn't too much different. So they had more competition there, but they just paid to keep games <laughs> off of Xbox, and you know uh, they paid uh, for the Call of Duty license. They get exclusive stuff. So if they weren't outright keeping the games exclusive they were paying for exclusive stuff now xbox also did that but it was on much smaller scale um, they weren't paying for the big deals they were kind of focusing on their own ips um and you know and uh you know some they did some like i said they did like tomb raider um they did um uh oh my god what was the uh, the ea game uh red the Respawn game, um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the shooter with the mech you climb into and all that stuff um, that now they have Apex kind of bore out of that. Uh, but they, again, they got further and further away from the quirkier stuff, the, you know, the stuff that uh, Team Asobi, is it Asobi was doing or Japan Studio. They actually just closed Japan Studio down um, and because they didn't nurture these, these types of games. Um, they built a fan base who laughed at those types of games, who laughed at stuff, you know, when other companies would make it, like uh, Astrobot. Yeah, they have Astrobot now, and a lot of these guys are running around touting for it, but they made fun of those types of games when a Nintendo or even a Xbox, uh, Microsoft will put a game like that out. It's Tinky Winky, you know, whatever types of games. Um, and so they culted a fan base that only cared about over the shoulder, um, narrative driven third person action games and you know that's why you got your god of wars and like i said you got your last of us you got your um, uncharted series which is one of my favorite series um but that's this kind of stuff they focused on um and later on you get your ghost of tsushima um and you know other titles um you get um uh, horizon and stuff like that and their fan base only started to care about those games along with call of duty because uh, they were pushing call of duty a lot with the exclusive uh, deals they had and their fan base just didn't care about these more experimental 
kind of quirkier games, platforming and all that kind of stuff. Heck, like their, their own platformers, like Ratchet & Clank, started to fail. Or not fail, but just started to sell a lot less. Up until the PlayStation 5 were ripped apart, which looks like a fantastic game, but none of the fan base doesn't care for that. And so they barely bought that game. Um, and that is Sony's own fault because they cultivated this audience. They cultivated this fan base who is just like kind of snooty <laughs> and only plays a certain type of game and they stop making those other types of games. And now they're in trouble. They're in trouble uh, currently because they don't have enough IP. Um, they have tons of IP. Let me, let me rephrase that. I don't know what they still own or what they don't own anymore, but they had tons of IP uh, in their back catalog uh, that they're just not catering to. They're not making those types of games anymore. And so their fan base hasn't been cultivated on that stuff for, you know, multiple generations at this point. And, you know, if they want to get their fan base to even care about this stuff, they got to spend a lot of money on this stuff, which they can't really do because it's not sustainable to do that. And so they're just in a, in a, between a, in a rock and a hard place. And so they bought, uh, uh, what's the, uh, the team that made... Um, the Concord game, I can't think of the name right now, but they bought that studio and, you know, that game probably cost a hundred million. I don't know how much they paid for the studio. The, you know, the game had been worked on before uh, Sony had bought them. So they didn't incur the total cost, but they did buy the studio. So they, you know, there's multiple millions of dollars, I'm sure. And so there's an investment. And so when you put a game out and it just kind of bombs, because it, it's just, it's not like it's a bad game. I don't think it's bad. It's just super bland and way late for that type of game to for anybody to care. So uh, it, it just bombed. Like it, you know, they put the game out and two weeks later, they're shutting down the servers uh, for the game. It's just a huge mistake. And the thing that Sony used to be touted for, they are now falling apart for. I don't know, I have my PlayStation 4 controller here as well, um, because this is where I stopped. I stopped at PS4 because PS5 didn't entice me. Um, the early PS5 games, all of them were on PS4. Um, so your God of Wars and your Uncharted, I played them on my PS4. And yes, there's other games that come out uh, that I would care about, like this upcoming game, Astrobot, but at this point, they're starting to put their games on PC, so I don't even need to buy a PlayStation 5 at this point. I'll just wait for it to come on PC and play it there. And the one chance they could have got me was with the VR, because I love PSVR. I have my headset right here, my PlayStation VR headset. I have tons of games for it. I have over 30 games for my PlayStation VR. And they put out VR 2 to die, because none of my PlayStation VR games on PS4 work they 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 didn't you know they haven't converted them over um and they just you know they it's already a niche crowd of people i think the playstation vr1 sold between five and seven million units so not a lot of people but still pretty successful for a niche product um and so you would think you would want to try to bring those people over that's potentially five million people you can bring over to the PSVR 2, which all of its great fidelity, I hear it's a great headset, um, especially for the price, um, you know, not barring what you gotta pay for uh, to be able to play it because you have to have PS5 as well. Until now, now you can <laughs> now you can play it on PC because they opened it up the PC, you just need to buy a converter. Um, they just, they fumbled that. They didn't bring me over, which was a bit, would have been a thing to bring me over because I love, love VR. I love VR1, I love PSVR1, and I would have probably loved PSVR2 with its, you know, graphic capabilities and fidelity, um, and the stuff that PSVR1 can't do well. Um, but they fumbled that. And, you know, like I said, there was this long, super long period of, you know, of like a, a middle transition area where you're, you know, you're putting games still on your last platform. You know, we're in year four here, you know, and, uh, they just started to like make exclusive. I mean, some titles here and there were only exclusive to PS5, nothing I really cared about, but that's a long time. And they, when you look at the numbers, they, they showed the numbers, half of their fan base is still on PS4. So that was a bad move. <laughs> I don't know if it was a bad move. I don't know if they could have forced gamers to come over from the PS4 or not, but I don't think that what they did helped and the fact that they don't make, they, they have no identity. For me, as far as I'm concerned, PlayStation doesn't have a real identity. I mean, they have 
you know, obviously Uncharted. I mean, but that's kind of been gone, and I don't know if that's coming back anytime soon. Horizon, um, they have God of War. Um, am I, what else? Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, which, and Spider Man. I mean, I like Spider Man, but a lot of things, I think a lot of people are Spider Man out at this point. Um, but, you know, Spider Man is a popular IP, but it's so expensive to license. So even when they have a game like Spider-Man that sells really well, they barely make any money off it because of the freaking license they've been paying for. So they just it's just not a lot. Uh, it's just not a lot of leeway. And again, for me as a fan, it's uh, I they lost me at this point because they, they got nothing out or coming out that I care about that I can't just wait to get on PC at this point because um, they're you know they're putting their games on PC also and it's just I'm for that price I'm not compelled to go out and get a PS5 at this point um, you know you could probably say oh well you got an Xbox series but I had an incentive to get an Xbox series uh, I had an Xbox one VCR <laughs> for one um, uh, I have tons of Xbox one games that I can just easily pay on my PS or on my Xbox series um, and Xbox enhances stuff, and um, they are, they make. Uh, there was a lot of games that came on an uh, Xbox series that I couldn't play on one. You know, um, I think they kind of cut that cord a little earlier. Not a whole lot earlier. Don't get it twisted. Um, but they cut that cord a little earlier, and uh, you know, Game Pass. There's just there was more incentives uh, for me to get the uh, a series. For me specifically, I know it's not for everybody. Obviously, the series or the uh, PS5 is doing a little better than the Series X. Um, you know, I think it's probably a 15 or 20 million console difference uh, as far as sales go. Uh, but Microsoft has embraced doing a whole other thing. They're, they're a platform at this point. And uh, Sony's kind of headed that way. So I'm like, why? You know, I don't have an incentive other than the cool uh, haptic feedback stuff, uh, but I can just buy that controller and <laughs> and play it on my again on my PC. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do, what they have to do at this point, what they can do, because um, it's gaming. You know, making these games expensive. It takes too damn long. Um, but if you had smaller stuff that you were cultivating your audience with, that could come out faster, then you'd have a lot. You know more leeway and that they don't have a lot of leeway right then they lost their cash cow uh in call of duty because uh, microsoft just snatched that up they snatched up um again microsoft is becoming a platform and they're not you know sticking you to the console they're giving you game pass there's still things i'm going to talk about them too because they do some stupid disjointed stuff too that's pissed off their fan base and uh, understandably so but at this point i just don't care <laughs> about PlayStation and uh, they're gonna have to put out some games I care about bring back Uncharted um, start doing more of their super old IPs bringing those back um, but do they want to put their resources into that I don't know will their fans care about it most likely not a lot of these guys started with late PS3 PS4 they don't care about all that old stuff but that's the stuff that you need to cultivate Microsoft is cultivating their audience, they, there's so much variety um, uh, on my, with Microsoft and the Game Pass and the games that they're putting out. Um, they're cultivating audiences all over the place from freaking Pentiment to Gears of War. Like, <laughs> that is a huge gap there. Um, South of Midnight, st stuff like that. The new Fable game, um, Avowed. They're putting out stuff that's everywhere that, you know, they can reach tons of audiences and they have no problem when it comes to their uh, their uh, uh, games as a service stuff, their stuff actually sells. You don't have to <laughs> shut it down in 14 days. Their games as a service games do really well. Um, so I don't know. Mike, uh, uh, Microsoft has its issues. Don't get it twisted. Like I said, I'll talk about that. But um, Sony, I, I don't know where they go because they can't seem to get this games as a service thing right. So where do they go? Um, Dare I say they're mismanaging, and it's weird to see that they're not getting the scrutiny. That if if this is Microsoft game that shut down in 14 days, 
it would be plastered everywhere. There wouldn't be, there's this weird like, oh, let's be, just walk on eggshells, uh, the poor developers and stuff like that. That would not happen <laughs> if this was Microsoft. Um, they would be destroying them the way they did when Redfall came out, um, which was more successful than Concord. Jeez, jeez Louise. Um, and it's not even a multi, oh, it's, a, it's not an online multiplayer game. It's not like, uh, it's a games as a service game and it still had more players. Ah, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy to me. Uh, but they've clearly lost their way. Jim Ryan left them in a hole with his emphasis. I don't think there it was a wrong emphasis, but they clearly don't have the games, uh, not yet, uh, to do this games as a service kind of initiative. So they have to go back to the drawing board quick and figure this out before they're in a world of trouble. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I would like to see them do the stuff that interested me and made me play Sony consoles. Um, I don't know if that'll ever happen again, but uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you think they should do? That's my video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out.